Good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome, 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 welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Well, you guys, it has been um very, very uh, interesting and trying week. However, as we all know, life keep moving on and we got to keep Push it, as Curtis Mayfield say, and sometimes make a way out of nowhere. Give you an update on my brother. Um, he hasn't. Um, suspect has not been arrested yet. Um. So. There's still some open ends on that situation. Um, the family is doing as well as he could be doing under these circumstances. And I think the most difficult part about this is that people are, while rightfully so, um, shocked and, um, you know, want to connect it's very important that a lot of times they need to, uh, most of the people need to realize that's them. That's what they need. May not necessarily mean what the family needs. And those things are different. Um, the, the family is dealing with a different kind of grief. The family is different with a different set of responsibilities. And part of the reason why I don't have a voice right now, um, especially when you're dealing with somebody that is so popular as my brother. Everybody seems to think that they're his best friend. Everybody um, uh, feels that they can demand something out of the people he left behind, in other words. Um, and basically, which means me or my daughter um, or them feeling that they have the uh, right to come and tell my mother you know, all these things. And I understand, while I understand the grief, like I said before, if you don't draw some lines with people and let them know, hey, this is not what's going on. This has not how any of this shit is going to work. Then you're going to have a problem because what's going to happen is you're going to sacrifice yourself. And that's not something that you should be able to draw a line between boundary and knowing what other people's grief is and doing what you need to do to protect yourself. So, because the way the law works here, there's a lot of things I don't know, and there's a lot of things people expect me to know. So, if I was to uh, be bombarded and answer all the things that come down the pipe, I mean, I literally would be sitting here, and I'm like, do they really think? And I know people mean well, y'all, so I don't want to sound like, but I'm just saying, a lot of these people, I don't know, of course, you know, so a lot of them are uh, 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 people that he knew, because Ricky, again, was such a social butterfly. So again, I appreciate everybody that loved him, and I know that he loved them right back, otherwise it wouldn't be this give and take. However, I know there was a lot of people that also, um, you know, are not taking into consideration, again, what the family is dealing with right now. Not having all the facts, not knowing what's going on. Um, and to continue to do that with a bunch of, uh, <laughs> you know, people that are in the midst of grief, to me, is just selfish. And I'm just going to say it straight the hell up. But I don't have no problem telling people that. You know how I do it. Um, you can take it or you can leave it alone. So now, um, what's difficult in all of this situation to me 
for me is that when something like this happens, the states go to the next of kin. At least that's the way it goes in the state of Wisconsin. Um, the next of kin is whoever person, uh, you know, in my case, my, father, my my brother has a daughter. So she's the next of kin, not me. Not the next of kin. These are the things that, you know, they're not understanding. They're not understanding a lot of the circumstances, um, you know, that we have to deal with. So some of y'all that know and are under the sound of my voice, spread the word. Because I don't mean to be rude, but I will be to protect me and myself and my sanity um, at this time. Because like I said, this is something that no, I don't wish on my worst enemy. And if people are asking you for uh, privacy, that should be honored and it should be respected. And if it's not, then you have to just go ahead and do what you have to do. Because you're going to come out your cocoon. You're going to allow people to, um, you know, share, you know, their grief. But it probably would be better if they would kind of get together with one another. As opposed to trying to come to us, because we don't really know them, you know, and and it would be better for them to congregate together to share their grief and their love for real. That's in my opinion, because it's not the best thing to do uh, here, especially when we're in a situation where y'all know what well, my my uh, family out there, y'all know how, what we've been dealing with. I've been dealing with this dementia. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff with both of my parents. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on. I think about all the things that they say. Stuff like this happens in threes. You know, all this stuff is weighing around on my psychic. So I have to go and purge myself. I have to meditate. I have to sit on the throne around the altar with God and filter things. And allow them to um, minister to my heart because uh, this is really rough. Um, and I laugh and then I say, well, who knows? They both could outlive me, right? <laughs> my father survived COVID. Can you guys believe it? And the only thing it did affect was his legs. You know, but with that being said, I still know he's an older man. And when I look at him, you know, and I know the, um, you know, the age that's caught up with him and all that stuff. And then, you know, and I'm looking, I think about our mortality in general. So, you know, dealing with a lot of stuff is not always easy. But what I would tell y'all this is, on the other side of that, get your get your business straight. Handle your business and make sure your business is together. So make sure there's no shock. There's no, um, you know, craziness. I had a, a, a foster sister uh, who died a couple of years ago and she had no insurance. So y'all already know. And it wasn't no GoFundMe. And she, was, uh, she wasn't even divorced yet. I don't even think she was divorced. And um, that was no help. And that's a whole situation I don't even want to talk about. Um, but nevertheless, get your business right. Because um, if you don't, it can be more chaotic. But I want you to hear just how barbaric the laws are in Wisconsin. Because I picked this article up. Um, I believe it's from uh, Journal Sentinel. I don't, I don't know. One, it was a, one of these towns. Well, one of these papers. A Wisconsin man who died in his apartment before Christmas is still responsible to pay January's rent, according to the property manager. Dina Barber said that her father, Robert, a Vietnam veteran who died in December, is required to pay the January rent since he vacated the property. Deanna Barber said being Lee management told her that her father broke his lease when he died. 
I said, you guys really do that to people? And she just kept repeating, it's that Wisconsin state law. It's Wisconsin state law. The company said it was sorry for Barbara's loss. We are sorry that the family is having to deal with uh, this loss. Our team tries to be supportive as possible with our tenants and their families, especially throughout this very difficult year. Too many have faced terrible medical issues, death, and financial hardship. We try to be respectful. Listen to this bullshit. We try to be respectful and flexible throughout challenging communication with family members. The team puts extra effort into the coordination of inspections of the unit. We do our best to attempt to relieve pressure as families try to go through personal items. For example, in some cases, family members are not close by and our staff has more regular contact with an individual that is living alone. Okay. I'm sorry. Our standard practice is to be reasonable. <laughs> is to be reasonable and meet tenants in the middle whenever possible. Also, <clears throat> while following the law and being consistent so everyone feels we are fair. Whatever happened with dead man uh, don't pay bills? That's a big lie, isn't it? And they certainly are still responsible for rent because my brother got killed over rent. Not this brother, but another brother. Incredible. Uh, this includes reducing or waiving some of our only charges in account, late fee, small rent balances, general and out charges relating to general cleaning, carpet cleaning, typical costs to light repairs or drywall or replacement, for example. Now, or keeping an apartment off market for both parents. The language in our standard form letter may strike an unsympathetic tone, particularly in difficult situations. However, we use standard content across the board to ensure consistency and adherence to the state law. See, this law sucks. Just like the law I'm telling you about now. And, and you know, but let's, let's move on. Let's move on, Khadija. The law requires us to list details that include supporting documentation and also respond in a certain time frame. Our staff tries to walk people through these details over the phone so that they understand the letters we send out and their re relation to these the lease. We don't surprise people. If a tenant owes money, that is clear. If it is light, moderate, or severe clean. Um, or repair, this is clear. When tenancy ends in these difficult type of situations, we work with the family. Uh, friends and power of attorneys through the challenges of cleaning out items in, and the transition of closing out to lease items. I mean, and closing, I'm sorry, and closing out terms of lease. We do our best to ease the pain of the process and absorb some costs to help make that transition a little easier. Now, I want to know what y'all think. Do you all think that that the person, if it passes away, or your family members pass away, um, that you are responsible for his rent until the rent is over until the lease is up. Do you know what kind of hardship that will put up, be put on the family? Is this insane or is it me? Maybe it's, does this sound normal? Because this is the mental house and shit sound mighty crazy now to me. I don't know. It's like, why am I straight? Why am I listening? What is going on here? 
Y'all tell me, what do you think? Do you think dead people should pay rent? I do live in Wisconsin. My brother did break, break his lease. Okay. So I try to stay one step ahead of the game. So this is the next thing that is going to be a, a problem for my family and I because we, we're going to be responsible for paying rent. The sad thing about this whole situation is, I hate to even say, there have been people that just want to know what they can get out of this apartment. Want to know? Can they have the keys? His apartment. And you already know who I'm talking to. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you without saying your name. I find it appalling. I find it disgusting. It is that kind of stuff, you know, that becomes you know, even more stressful. So there's a poem that um, an author friend of mine wrote in her book. It was called um, What Death Brings. And it really brings out a lot. It brings out so much. It brings out the love, but it also brings out the hate. Disguised as love. The hypocrisy. Disguised as love. All that stuff. And I'm built for it because I've been through it. That's like, what, the third time? And at some point, you get a little hard around it. You get a little disgusted with the human family. The selfishness and the ability to not think about anybody but themselves. All those things. And the more wiser you get, the more tools you have in your shed how to handle this madness. Should people who are killed be responsible to pay their lease until it's up? So if they just paid and just signed the lease, and they just paid their rent. And they have 11 months to go. Do you think that family should be required? Because it doesn't really matter what we think or feel. This is the law. It's got to be something. It, this, this, this can't be real. Y'all leave me your comments below. Please, tell me what you think about this situation. With that being said, y'all, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in the next video.